hyped for the new update, new player, or a veteran returning after a long break, this video is perfect for you. We're gonna break down all the native rosters in the game and rank them in different tiers from why do they even exist to god tier. This benefits both the major and future different minor factions, so the ranks are based off of a lot of different factors like how strong are the units, which units are extremely good, especially with campaign upgrades, how good is the roster alone or when mixed with others, and how accessible is the area on the map for all factions. Obviously some major factions could have a native roster preference, but realistically, let's look at it from a non-biased point of view, how likely are you to interact with them. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get on with the show. The Highlands offer an extremely aggressive roster, but how good is it? Anatolian Militia exists with one job, to make other units look good, and trust me, this is the easiest thing ever. Terrible stats across the board, but they're basically free meat shields. Avoid using them unless you really need meat for the grinder. Kashki and Tribesmen are a disgusting unit, so before the nerfs they were capable of destroying much more expensive units with a frontal charge and they can still do that as long as they're spearmen or low tier swords. They're amazing flankers even against better infantry as they have armor breaker which, if the name wasn't a giveaway, flat out ruins enemy armor. They have a passive unique to the Kashkians, which is mist walkers, so during fog they're hidden until they're almost in the enemy's face. Cheap and deadly. Kashki and Javelin Throwers are dirt cheap, they come with a small shield and low armor, they can block some missiles but they won't really survive. They're amazing on the flanks if they can get behind enemy lines and unleash a few volleys into armored units they'll easily more than double their value in damage. They're fast and stalk actually lets them easily do this when you're fighting in fog and if they get caught, who cares. It's a great value cheap unit in general. The Kashkians never seem to disappoint, and this continues with the Axemen. Savage barbarians that can totally hold the line versus low tiers, and they can end up killing more expensive infantry. Mistwalker is situationally useful. These guys will carry your early game so hard, it's not even funny, and with army upgrades, they're even viable late game if you need to spam a lot of cheap full stacks. Just an amazing unit. Phrygian Spearmen are a cheap frontline if all you want to do is just buy time for the rest of your army. High armor and block chance lets them tank for a bit and they're great flank support. Spearwall lets them hold the line even better with their charge reflect and missile block increase, so in general it's a reasonable unit if you need spears but don't expect them to last long against proper infantry. Kashki and Spear Chargers are great if you need an aggressive, flexible infantry option. They will annihilate chariots, especially if they charge into spear brace formation. Kashkians do really good against infantry, head on or flanking depending on what you're facing. Keep them away from dedicated shock troops or missiles and they'll just do bloody work. Phrygian skirmishers come with good armor for a ranged unit, light jabs and 12 ammo so if left alone they'll destroy anything in their range. Their offensive stats are pretty good too, so they perform even after they're out of ammo, just try not to get them shot to death before that happens, yeah? Armored Anatolian Spears have great armor, high missile block chance and spear walls, so you can expect them to be an actual immovable object against equal or cheaper units. Storm Warrior gives them a morale buff in thunderstorms and rain, so it's a nice help, but don't use them in sand, mud or water because they're overburdened, so this destroys their combat stats. Renowned Phrygian Javelin Throwers are a direct upgrade to the cheaper counterparts in every way except range and ammo. So they have deadlier stats across the board and they'll destroy anything they touch. Just like all Javelins, be careful how you use them and they're well worth the investment. Kashkian Raiders are monsters in every way. Insane offensive unit that can steamroll most infantry with a frontal charge and don't get me started when you flank with them. Improved flanking attack makes them even deadlier, and Mistwalker lets you do the situational fog jump scare. They scale really good into the later game, so just keep them safe from missiles, as they have pretty average armor. Heavy Anatolian chariots are just gonna annihilate any infantry in their path, just... I don't even need to talk about this, don't run them into braced spears. If you love to play fast and aggressive, this roster is just made for you. They have some actual monsters recruitable, and you've heard me already fanboy the Kashkin, so I don't need to say more. The only weakness in this roster is the lack of long range, which can be a total game breaker in Pharaoh. 
It's also pretty annoying getting here if you're not starting at Anatolia or North Canaan because there's just no saleable river here. This is one of my favorite rosters in the game and I could be biased here and automatically put it in god tier, boom, video over, but no, I'm not gonna do that. Realistically, you're not gonna be interacting much with this roster unless you're an Anatolian faction or probably Northern Canaanite, so that's the only thing really holding it back from just being blind pickable great. Armor is the name of the game in Isua in the Lowlands, but how good are their units? Isuan Militia, the standard for levy units, expendable, dirt cheap, and comes with clubs. They can get a lot of gold value from fighting cheap armored units with Armor Breaker, but don't expect them to kill anything except Spearmen. They have terrible stats across the board, so they'll just get annihilated by both ranged and close combat, but you didn't expect them to live long, did you? Isuan Slingers are fine for sniping low-tier archers, but otherwise they're your standard low-tier sling, they can't really do much. They just exist for covering fire and baiting better enemy units to commit. Do you want a low-tier frontline that can theoretically survive for a bit? Luvian Spearmen and Swordsmen have good armor and medium shield, so they can actually take a beating. The Spearmen have Spear Wall, which gives them even more block chance and charge reflect, but don't be fooled by this, they'll still die. The Swordsmen have better offense, but don't expect them to kill much. These units exist just to die for your empire. Hittite archers have respectable armor, so they can hold their ground in missile duels. You can get pretty good use out of them, and they're not the worst once they're out of ammo. Storm Warrior gives them an edge over equal tier archers when it's rain or thunderstorm, but overall they don't scale as well into the campaign. Isu and Axemen are just fantastic, so great stats across the board, though they could have better shields. They'll rip through equal tier units and they can scale just fine into the later game, although you have a direct upgrade waiting down the roster. Armored Anatolian Spears are exactly the same like the Highlands, so use them in the same purpose. Buy time, let the other skill. Armored Hittite Skirmishers are a very fun hybrid unit, so they have insane armor and they're one of the only shielded javelin units in the game, so that makes them very tanky unless they're focused fired by the best of the best archers. They have an axe which makes them able to do good damage when flanking even though they have low offensive stats. Storm Warrior is pretty situational. Use them against elites and they'll pay their weight in gold and trust me these guys are pretty heavy. Renowned Isuan Axemen are a direct upgrade in every way. They're tanky, they're deadly, and they're out for blood. Seriously, this is just a beast of a unit. They can hold a line, but they're fantastic as flankers because of improved flanking attack. They will just basically chop up almost anything. They scale really well into the endgame, and with unit buffs, they can easily chop up AI elites. Just a pure beast. Armored Anatolian Swordsmen are made to be a frontline unit, but they're just inferior in every way to the Isuan renowned Axemen outside of shield block and some armor. They have nowhere near the same offensive potential and they're overburdened which makes them suffer a lot more in bad terrain. Completely avoid this unit unless you really desperately for some reason just want the extra tankiness, they're just not worth it compared to renowned Isuan Axemen. Heavy Anatolian chariots are exactly the same like with the Highlands, so the same rules apply. It's pretty easy to get access to these units, you just gotta get to the Anatolian coast. The moment you unlock Isuan Axemen, it's basically campaign over, they just give you so much momentum. You can literally turn your brain off, recruit nothing but Isuan Axemen, maybe a few ranged units here and there, just right click and watch them melt the enemy army. Great chariots, decent ranged, and if you recruit renowned this one Axeman, you're basically gonna bully the AI into oblivion. This roster essentially gets hard carried by its location and just a couple of units, but they're so good, this is just going straight into the great tier. Do you like having a massive horde of units that serves no other purpose except to die for the pharaoh's will? You might actually like this, or not. A lower Egyptian infantry has bigger unit size, so that means more effective HP, but for most of them it's not a good thing and you'll see why. All the low tiers have heat resistance, which is great against sweltering weather, and they have weak vigor, which is actually terrible. It makes your units get tired faster when they fight or run. 
Levy Spearmen and Clubmen exist just to die for your empire because their combat stats are not there. Weak Vigor cripples their already non-existent battle effectiveness. Just use them as a big HP sponge to block enemy charges or missiles and just, for the love of all the Egyptian gods, let the rest of your army do the killing. Lore Militia Slingers are actually not bad. Bigger unit size means they have superior firepower to other low tier slings to carry you through some missile duels and if for whatever reason only the gods know you decide to charge them up close, their maces might get a few lucky hits against armor. Lower Egyptian archers are another early game carry where despite their overall stats being pretty bad, their bigger unit size lets them do pretty good damage against low armored units as long as they're well protected. Unlike some other low tier archers, they can't do anything in close combat. The first rule of lower Egyptian conscripts is you don't talk about lower Egyptian conscripts. We just don't. They don't exist. If they existed, their only purpose would be to take as much damage as they can while the rest of the army does the killing. And no, not even a spire would help them if they existed outside of a few lucky kills here and there. At least the Axemen would theoretically be useful in the early game because the weapon type is just great. Armored Egyptian archers are a direct upgrade from the tier 2 unit in every way. They have great armor for archers and a bigger unit size so they'll actually decimate enemies. Spearmen and swordsmen suffer from the same general design problems of Lower Egypt. Yeah, they have a lot of entities and HP, they can theoretically tank a lot of damage, but in reality they just can't hold or kill nearly as well as they should, and there are so many units in the game that do their job much better and can actually kill enemies at the same time. Can you win with them in your army? Of course. But I really suggest avoiding them like the plague. Light Chariots are great for harassing the flanks, but don't expect them to kill as fast with their bows, it takes ages to rack up kills because of their model count. They'll kill missile units and low tier infantry if you micro them, but they're also easily killed the moment they get focused by anything, and don't even think about using them in chariot duels. Chariots will obliterate squishy units and exposed infantry, but don't let them stay in combat too long. They're not as good in chariot duels versus dedicated melee chariots until you deplete their HP with arrows, but it'll be fine to charge in eventually. Overall, a great improvement compared to the light chariots. It's easy to recruit these units, but here's the problem. No faction really wants these units. They have nothing to offer in the mid game and late game. Do they help early? Yeah, but theoretically any roster helps early. Can the units be useful? Yes, they can, but this is more of a I'm gonna take this at Javelin Point roster, you know, because I could say Gunpoint, but we're on the Bronze Age, gotta be era specific. You recruit them because you're forced to recruit them, not because you want to, you know, unless you're crazy like me. So down to the bottom of the pit you go. Upper Egypt focuses on quality over quantity. Their low tier units still have heat resistance, but luckily they don't have weak vigor. Militia clubmen are just what you expect. Expendable, cheap, and not really capable of punching much above their weight unless they're fighting spearmen. One funny thing about them are their throwing sticks, which are pathetic compared to javelins, but you know what? Maybe you can get a lucky kill sometimes. Militia slingers are identical to other cheap slings. Even though they're worse up close, they have a mace, so if you're crazy enough to engage them into anything, they just might score a few lucky hits for faster armor breaking. If they actually succeed though, you might as well buy a lottery ticket in real life. Upper Egyptian archers are some of the cheapest archers in the game and they give you much needed firepower early on. Especially for factions that don't want to go out of their way to recruit their own faction archers such as Seti. They're a great early game help as archers just obliterate low tier units, but they don't scale at all. Conscripted Axemen are just insane all around. Great offensive stats, and even though their armor is low, a medium shield gives them some protection against missiles. Their Aspire passive gives them a plus 2 bonus to attack and defense when there's an ally nearby with at least 60 morale. So this has pretty much permanent uptime as long as your general is nearby and combined with army upgrades this actually lets them see some action even late game when you just need cheap, reliable armies. 
Javelin throwers are a glass cannon, so they'll get destroyed because of their low armor, but they punch a lot above their weighted range, and even up close because of their axe and decent stats. They're a fast unit, so it's not really hard to get them behind the enemy and unload all of your ammo and just go into action. Upper Egyptian spearmen might look solid on paper, but they're pretty bad because of their smaller unit size, which doesn't really allow them to tank as much as similar tier spears. They can absorb missiles, especially in spear wall, and they're still fine into mounted units, but don't expect them to perform anything heroic on the battlefield. The swordsmen suffer from the same problem of lower unit size, which effectively makes them outclassed in every category by so many other units in the game. Even the Axemen conscripts perform like monsters in comparison. Avoid this unit. Renowned archers are glorious, just like Egyptian archers should be. Good armor and amazing range combined with excellent firepower allows them to win against most ranged units. Rapid fire lets them mow down infantry and they even have a kopesh when they're out of ammo. You thought we were done? <laughs> no. They even have encourage which gives a morale buff to nearby units so they can cover parts of your army the general Zora can't reach. They're usable from the moment you unlock them till the end of the campaign, they're just overall great. Maysax warriors fill the gap of reliable late game shock infantry that some factions lack. Insane offensive stats, combined with precursor javelins, means they'll devastate anything they connect with, ideally from behind. Encourage and improved flank and attack make them a great supporting unit as well. So their only weakness is their small unit size, but the raw stats make up for this, so you just gotta use them wisely and this won't really be an issue. Kopesh warriors are a great flexible unit. Do you want them to hold the line? Improved flanking defense and encourage help. Do you want him to destroy? The Kopesh lets them mow down infantry combined with their javelins, and they even get improved flanking attack. The smaller unit size can be an issue against some other higher tier sword and axes, but use them well and it'll be fine. The chariots are exactly the same as Lower Egypt, so use them in the same way and things are gonna be great. So where are we gonna put Upper Egypt? The units are great, and honestly, every faction involved with this part of the map wants a piece of that roster. Local factions definitely want to fill out any roster gaps Upper Egypt offers, and if you ever plan to touch Egypt even as an invading force, it's not a waste to spend an extra turn or two sailing a bit down the Nile for some amazing strategical locations and very reliable units. So this makes Upper Egypt great. If you want amazing archers, Nubia has what you need, if you're willing to go to the other end of the map. Nubian recruits are very good for tier 1, so they're fast, and they have decent armor combined with a medium shield, that actually means they can reach the front line. They're pretty decent at grinding, and armor breaker means they'll easily earn more than they're worth when fighting against armored spears or very weak swords. A very good levy unit, essentially. Nubian Hunters are the cheapest javelins in the game, so they'll die if anything looks at them, but you're not meant to use them as a traditional unit. They have the ambush ability, which turns them unspottable until they're extremely close. They can easily earn more than twice their cost and damage, as long as they fire into unshielded or rear. Even against elites, they can perform so good. Strong Vigor means they tire slower, and they have clubs when they're out of ammo, so they're not completed that weight. They're very tricky to use, so they're not worth the investment unless you really like javelins, then I can totally recommend them. Nubian bowmen are dirt cheap, so what can you expect from them? Honestly, not much because their damage is bad, but at least they tire slower. They're not worth recruiting on the campaign as Amun Mess because he has access to his faction archers very fast, and they completely outclass the Nubian bowmen. By the time you reach Nubia with other factions, they're already dead in the water. Pushite archers have great armor for a tier 2 unit, and their special ability Blot Out the Sun makes them fire 30% faster at the cost of some accuracy and fatigue. They're actually great if you pick them up early, or get them from the Viceroy of Kush court demand. Kushite spearmen recruits have pretty good armor and high block shields for their tier, but don't expect them to hold the line against most units unless in spear wall, and even then they can't really do much. They're pretty bad at chariot supporting because of their bad charge and damage. 
Nubian Clubmen are a direct upgrade to the recruits, so they're a great frontline if you actually rush them early on the campaign, because they can grind very efficiently and Armor Breaker also helps them earn good value from armored units. But unless you can rush them, they're not really worth the investment because they get outclassed by a lot of infantry units. Nubian Longbowmen were pretty famous in history, but how do they hold up in-game? Longbows have the highest range, at 230, and Amon Mess special Tasseti Longbowmen have 240. Even the mid-tier Longbows outrange the best archer units in the game, such as Royal Archers or Palastu Archers. This makes them extremely good if you can play around their max range, and if you try hard, the enemy range will never reach you. The downside of longbows is their high reload time, so the average tier 3 archer has a 5.9 second reload and longbows have 10.2. If your faction is desperate for archers, just sail down the Nile and grab them, you won't regret it. Until you do. Kushite spearmen are better than recruits in the way, but that doesn't really say much. They're still not the best spearmen even for their tier, they're pretty mediocre. I'd avoid recruiting them, just like the recruits, unless you really have nothing else. Another direct upgrade, the renowned Nubian Longbowmen bring insane firepower to the battlefield. The AI just can't handle focused fire, especially by something that massively outranges it. You can comfortably use them into the late game, even against elites. If you prefer composite bows, renowned Kushite archers are amazing. Good armor combined with great range and blood out the sun means they'll easily outduel equal tier archers. 22 ammo so they can shoot for a long time and once they're out of it, Kopesh lets them actually be useful in melee. It's a fantastic unit. What are we gonna do with Nubia? So let's be real. The location is very bad if you're not Egyptian. Even then, you have to sail all the way down the Nile and occupy a province, then transport the army back. So you have to make an effective supply line, basically. If your faction is desperate for archers, they provide something unique. That also happens to be extremely deadly. You just have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Longbows can completely warp the game. So just because of that, I'm gonna put them in the situational tier. The Western Desert roster specializes in a, you probably guessed it, you know, desert warfare. Highly situational, but extremely useful. The Libyan units have a unique desert fighter trait, so they're immune to heat and the sand terrain debuffs, and they have fewer penalties during sandstorms. Tier 2 and above have Sand Scorpion, which makes them hidden during sandstorms right until they're in the enemy's face. Libu Slingers are your standard, dirt cheap slings that have Desert Fighter though, so that does make them situationally better, and they have clubs. If you're crazy enough to throw them up close, they might even score a few lucky hits against armor. Tribesmen are another cheap meat shield, which has to rely on lucky hits to do any damage whatsoever, so their stats are pretty bad, with the exception of their medium shield, so they might just survive a few volleys here and there, but realistically, they're best used as just bait. Desert Runners are an amazing flexible unit, so they'll destroy pretty much any mounted engagement they support, Spear Brace is always useful to protect your lines from chariots, and they can do good damage to infantry when flanking. They get outclassed by other Libu options for infantry killing, but if you need a cheap, versatile unit, they're great. Libu Hunters are another great flex pick, so they're great at killing low armor targets, but they're very squishy so they can die to other range. They have an axe and decent offensive stats for their tier, so it's not a bad idea to actually throw them into the grinder once they spend all their ammo. Raiders are cheap, fast and deadly, so the perfect glass cannon combination. They can absolutely devastate more expensive units when flanking because of their stats and armor breaker, and even their funny throwing sticks help a bit. They're squishy, so they won't survive any missiles or extended fights, but use them well and they'll paint the sands red. Skirmishers are great light javelins, if you can keep them alive long enough. They'll massacre elites when firing into the rear, and their axe, combined with a high melee attack, turns them into another multipurpose unit. The Libu are almost naked, let's be real here, so they can't live through any missile fire. They need extra care unless they're ambushing in sandstorms, but they're worth it. Tribe Spears have decent defense and attack, but they can't hold the line as well compared to a lot of other spears because of their low armor, but at least they have a medium shield so they're kind of okay against missiles. 
They're a great support unit against chariots, but the problem here is that they compete for the exact same role with the runners, which are much deadlier. I'd avoid recruiting them unless for some reason you're roleplaying that you need them, I guess? A leap of warriors are another glass cannon. A direct upgrade from the raiders which trades the club for a pretty deadly axe that will butcher just about anything when flanking, and the throwing sticks, you know, you might win the lottery with a few kills here and there. Extremely deadly, extremely squishy, be smart when using them. Composite bowmen are a direct upgrade to hunters, so a tier 4 unit, they're very squishy because of their lower unit size, and you know what, they're dressed in animal skins, but they make up for this with great range, firepower, and even encourage. So you can support your tribe as they break the enemy ranks. They also have rapid fire, which means you'll destroy anything they focus on. They're not the best when out of ammo because they use a worse sword compared to similar tier archers, and their defense stance is pure bait. It's a pretty good option unless you have access to armored archers in the same tier. Desert swords are a pretty decent frontline despite their low armor because of their medium shields, very high defense, and their attack value actually lets them kill something. And you know, the lucky throwing sticks. Encourage is always nice to have. They're not even close to the best swords, but they still work. So where are we gonna play as the Libu? Good early game, great mid game, late game is honestly lackluster because a lot of nearby rosters essentially have superior archers because armor matters too much in ranged duels late game. Expanding into the western desert is extremely annoying even if you're Egyptian, unless you're playing Tausret or the minor Libu factions, or Setnakte who will basically start there. By the time you get access to Libu units with other cultures, you're pretty much snowballed to the point where these units are essentially worthless. The units are really fun to play with, but at the end of the day, the roster is situational. Where do I even start with this one? Okay, so get ready to set sail. The Sea People have an extremely diverse roster with some of the best units in the game. Do you want cheap meat shields for the grinder? Islander spears and seafaring clubmen are here to die in pursuit of glory, so the clubmen have armor breaking, which can make them earn more than twice their gold value against armored spears, but don't even think about using them against proper infantry, please. Seafaring slings get small shields, and because of that they're able to outdo low-tier archers and most low-tier slingers, but they're not exactly the most cost-efficient, and they don't scale well. Unless you get them early on, don't really bother. Aegean fame seekers are insanely broken, and no, I actually mean it. They have powerful strikes, which makes them have the same melee attack even when they're exhausted. Fatigue is such an important stat in Total War, and on top of this, they also have armor breakers, so they can actually do heavy damage to more expensive units, as long as you flank with them. Great scaling, great damage, what more do you want? Islander Swordsmen are a cheap frontline that gets reduced morale penalties when being flanked, and you'd think this makes them decent, right? No, they're trash. They can't throw their jabs while charging right now, which kind of goes against their purpose as an aggressive roster in general. Their shields are also counted small for some reason, unlike most of the Sea People infantry of the same tier, and their overall stats are just mid. Avoid this unit like the plague. Aegean Light Archers are very average for tier 3. Low armor and no real redeeming factors, but you know what? At least they look cool. Aegean Spear Chargers are one of the most cost-efficient chargers in the game. So, they're squishy, but they have great damage output for a spear unit. Strider means they ignore stat debuffs when fighting in forest or tall grass, improved flanking attack is great for lowering enemy defense, and on top of that, they have javelins. If you can throw them before charging, they get even more value, but here's another trick. Spear Wall reflects enemy charge bonus, and they can even throw javelins in the formation. If they come close to mounted units or exposed infantry, they'll melt them. Islander Heavy Axemen are slow walking tanks. Disgusting armor value alongside a medium shield makes them very tanky for a mid-tier axe unit, even if their defense doesn't look too good on paper. They have strong vigor, so it takes longer for them to get fatigued. If your faction is lacking high armor units, they're just a great choice that scales well into the endgame. Seafaring Javelinmen are a fun, flexible unit, so they use light jab, so they don't pack as strong of a punch, but they have high range and a lot of ammo. Their passive lets them regenerate stamina when there are no close enemies, so that means they can charge fresh into close combat. 
Not the best attack and defense, but they have an axe, so they can do good damage if they rear charge. Very fun to use if you like javelins. Marauder Slingers are another hybrid unit that looks good on paper, but what's the reality? They're slings, so don't expect them to stand up to equal tier archers and above. Their armor is at least decent for a ranged unit, but here's where it gets spicy. They're spear chargers. It's a fun unit, but I do not recommend it most of the time. Seafaring Graders are a bit overpriced, but they do bring one neat thing, fear. A flat minus eight debuff to enemy morale, which stacks with flaming shot and some other modifiers. If you want to mass route an enemy flank or just punch through the center, these guys can be in your army, but they won't do most of the killing unless they're fighting low armor units. Okay, marauding axe chargers should be banned by the Bronze Age Geneva Convention, seriously. This is one of the most efficient shock units and punches so much above its weight. They have an amazing weapon in charge, but if that wasn't enough, they also have the breakthrough charge is passive. This ignores charge defense or reflect and it doubles their charge bonus. I don't need to say anything else. Whenever you get the chance to recruit them, don't just recruit, spam them. Cover them for missiles and this is just an automatic win. Aegean armor jabs are not glass cannons like most other units, they're tanks. They have insane armor for a skirmisher unit, high damage, and if that wasn't enough, they're very good up close because of their axe. Unfortunately, no shield. Fatigue resistance is always useful, so if you love javelins, you will not regret this unit. Aegean armored raiders are a fantastic tier 4 spear unit. They're heavily armored and come with an overall good stat line. Improved flanking defense means it doesn't get lowered as much when they're attacked from the rear or side. Shield wall lets them grind against most equal tier infantry, although they're still good out of formation. Roving Kapesh warriors are another insane unit, so are you noticing a pattern here with sea people by now? Thanks to Furious Charge, they inflict the flanking debuff when charging from the front. Sometimes you don't need tactics, you know, you just gotta caveman it. This is one of the best non-elite units in the game. They even have javelins, though they currently don't fire on the charge, so you just have to micro around this. Once again, the moment you get them, recruit them, abuse them, it's a free game. Aegean armored archers continue the archery tradition of Crete on foreign shores. Now, these guys don't mess around. They have insane armor for an archer unit, disgusting range and damage. They'll melt anything they touch, and the armored archers are really good up close with their aggressive stats. They even have Catch or Breath passive for the stamina regeneration. If your faction doesn't have elite archers, even if it does, just go for this man. Trust me, you won't regret it. Islander Raiders have one job and one job only, to grind you into the dust. One of the best close combat units in the game. Fantastic stat line combined with Armor Breaker means they'll just demolish almost anything they touch. They tire slower and if that wasn't good enough, they lose less morale when being flanked. Never defend, just heroic advance after charging for the extra defense and grind your enemies into the ground. Aegean Panoply Spearmen, I dare you to say that three times in a row by the way, are a nightmare. Insane stat line across the board combined with stat fast and improved flanking defense means they can hold a battle line and even win against some offensive infantry, but here's where it gets funny. When they're in spear wall, they can beat pretty much any infantry unit that charges them frontally and they don't even really use stamina. It just takes a long time for them to kill elites, but these are true heroes on the battlefield. Renowned seafaring raiders are a monstrous upgrade compared to the tier 3 version with a flexible role. Fear is always useful, they're disciplined so they don't care if you lose your general, they can easily hold the line, but they also have improved flanking so they do pretty decent on the flanks. They have javelins, but lack of firewall moving really reduces their effectiveness, so you kinda have to spend the ammo. They're not the best swords, but they do have a flexible role if you want to recruit them, so just reckless advance for max damage and watch enemies run away. This roster has no weaknesses outside of the fact it lacks chariots, but once again that's very easy to fix. These units can just make or break a campaign completely. If you build a Warrior's Refuge, you have a random chance to get Sea People units every turn, and you can even get high tier units as early as tier 2. Believe me, I have a Ramses campaign on Legendary where I got a tier 4 Aegean Armor Javelin unit on turn 2. This means you can recruit them anywhere, but you do have to wait. 
There are mods that unlock their recruitment for everyone if you prefer it that way, or after capturing them in battle, which both are by the way historically correct, so it's not really cheesy. Every single faction in the game benefits from Sea People units. This is easily god tier and there's just no discussion about it. Kanan has some amazing strategical locations, but how good are the units? Recruits are a great unit. Medium block chance and pretty high armor for their tier lets them survive long enough to actually get some damage done, and thanks to Armor Breaker, you already know, they earn pretty great value against armored spears, just don't use them against good infantry. Expendable is always a bonus and they have the ambush ability, so when activated they move slower but they won't be seen until they're extremely close so you can cheese the AI with this. Strider is always nice to remove terrain debuffs from tall grass and forest, so it's a pretty good levy unit, honestly. Rock throwers are your standard cheap slingers with ambush, which is actually fantastic on a ranged unit as you can mess with AI targeting and Strider can always help out. Skirmishers are great light javelins, high damage for the price, Strider and Ambush open up some really high playmaking potential and they're not bad up close against other low tier units. But here's where things get spicy. They have Spear and the Spokes ability which destroys chariots. They fire their javelins and not only do sick damage but slow down the chariot to a crawl. Don't leave home without this unit if you like using javelins. Shield bears don't have the best stats, but they have very high armor and shield block for their tier. Put them in shield wall for even higher block chance and just laugh at the enemy ranged. <laughs> Until this unit eventually dies. Cell swords are a versatile unit, so they have great armor for a tier 2 sword. Okay stats, although they could use a better weapon. They can actually fire their javelins in the charge, which is great, and they also have access to spear in the spokes, which means they can do serious damage to chariots. Just a great early game unit. Lightseer and archers are great. They have low armor, but they make up for this with excellent firepower and 22 ammo means they can shoot for a while before running out. They have high attack for a low tier archer unit, so they can do something if they run out of ammo. If you're fighting in Kanon, this will be your core archer unit as soon as you unlock them, and you can use them for most of the campaign without problem. Veteran swordsmen are in an awkward spot. So they're a direct upgrade from cell swords, but by tier 3, other factions have better swords and axes on average, and the next sword unit from the region completely outclasses them. If you have spare money on the campaign, you can bring them, but you can also save up to rush to the next tier. Armored Syrian archers are another direct upgrade, though you can comfortably use them till the very end of the campaign. Great armor for archers, great range, and rapid fire that gives them very high killing power. They're flexible in melee when they're out of ammo. Just keep them protected and let them rip. Veteran shield bearers are almost immovable objects. Very high armor and block chance combined with overall decent stats and improved flanking defense makes them a great frontline, especially when you can blob units in spear wall. With late game army upgrades they can be excellent defensive units, though keep in mind there are definitely better spearmen out there. Renowned Swordsmen pack a heavy punch with their great offensive stats, javelins, and on top of that they're very tanky with their high armor and decent shield. These guys will be your core unless you have access to better faction swords, or axes, and they're perfectly usable in the endgame with and without any army buffs. They also have Spear in the Spokes, which means they're great against chariots. Armored Canaanite Chariots can totally wreck a battle line. Good speed on top of their good armor and offensive stats lets them do almost anything they want unless they get bogged down or <laughs> a spear gets stuck in their wheels. Very effective unit. So where are we gonna put Fenhu and Yamhad? This is an amazing strategic location. Basically every campaign will involve this area unless you're intentionally staying AFK in your starting province or something. The lands are rich with resources and the units are just amazing. Great early game, great mid game and late game. It's basically a roster with essentially no gaps and if you're missing something like let's say shock infantry for your playstyle, it doesn't matter, you can mix easily with other nearby rosters and just create the perfect army. All of this just makes Fenhu and Yamhad great. The only reason it's not god tier is because the roster actually has counterplay. Sinai and Rechen will have many aggressive units, among them the Habiru, the infamous raiders and mercenaries of Kanan. But how effective are they in-game? 
Abiru Militia are dirt cheap, fast and deadly. What's not to like? They'll cut through both low tier and some high tier units if they're flanking. You can obviously use them as open field bait, but they're much better on the flank since they have Vanguard. They can easily flank a battle line or scare archers away. It's just an amazing unit. Abiru archers are also dirt cheap, but unfortunately they don't have Vanguard like the Militia. You can use them early game for some nice damage against low armored units and they can even fight alright in close combat with their axe, but they don't scale as good as some other levies. Shasu tribesmen are a tier 2 club unit. They're good if the fight lasts long enough for them to grind through armor, but there are a lot more offensive unit options for this tier that allow you to end the battle before you feel the impact of armor breaker. Do you want your battles to be as over as fast as possible? Do you want a cheap, reliable shock unit with vanguard deployment? Abiru Raiders are disgustingly effective. They'll massacre low tier units left and right as well as some higher tier units when flanking. They scale extremely well for a tier 2 unit with army buffs thanks to their weapon and charge so you can easily include them in a late game army even on legendary. Just use them well and they'll easily carry your battles for you. At first look, Shasu archers look like your standard tier 3 archers with low armor and a good output, but they have a full infantry size unit so their damage is through the roof. They're also pretty good in close combat once they're out of ammo. Honestly, I love this unit. Abiru skirmishers continue with the gorilla theme of the roster, so vanguard deployment makes them extremely easy to use. A few volleys into the rear and elites will melt. Spear in the spokes also turns them into chariot killers. They're not as good up close like some other javelin units because they use a sword, but they're still perfectly fine. Shasu warriors are a direct upgrade from the tribesmen, but are they worth it? They've got a pretty good armor and their offensive stats are not as bad so they can pack a punch and we all know how good armor breaking can be. Now, the only problem is, by the time you reach tier 3 or this area, most of the major factions just have much better infantry, but Shasu Warriors are still fine as a supporting grind unit. Renowned Abiru Slingers are one of the few high tier slingers in the game. They have decent armor, great melee stats for a slinger unit, and their missile damage is pretty good. Now, the only issue is that slings are completely outclassed by bows late game. If you somehow don't have access to other units, sure, but you can get better archers nearby. Abiru mercenaries are just amazing. Great offensive stats across the board combined with their axes, it just makes them rip and tear through enemies. Vanguard lets them ambush effectively and flank, but they can also frontline if you need them to, though they have average armor and small shields. If it didn't sell you on this unit, they literally have pocket sand as an ability. I'm no joking. It reduces all enemy units attack and defense by 5 for 15 seconds if they're in a 20 meter radius. Did I mention pocket sand? Yeah, we know you want this unit. Armored Canaanite chariots are exactly the same as Fenhu and Yamhad, so deadly and reliable. Sinai has a coastal area that you can reach, so recruiting units here shouldn't be a problem, you just have to bully Ramses first. Inland access is a little bit more annoying, but it's honestly not a big deal. So the units are great if you love an aggressive playstyle, but standalone it is a little bit more of an issue because they're lacking some critical components like very strong range than game as an example. For the best results you have to combine this with let's say the Canaanite roster and then you basically have something the AI just can't deal with. I'm biased towards Sinai, so if I was using that I would just put them in great tier, but I'm trying to be realistic here. They're perfectly fine standalone, but once again you gotta mix them for the best results. That's why they're going into the good tier. We saw the rosters and which units perform the best for every region, now let's do a quick recap and some final thoughts. So you can use this for any difficulty, you can even apply it if you're playing a multiplayer campaign. I try to be as unbiased as possible and I'm really curious to hear how much you agree or disagree with the placements. When I look at them again I'm pretty sure they're all in the correct place as some rosters just have too much going for them and some have nothing or almost nothing. Like Lower Egypt, unless you're starting here you want to completely avoid it because they give you nothing after the early game. 
Libu are amazing if you get them early, so they're best for Tostret or the Egyptian minor factions. The only issue with them is that you have a nearby roster which completely outclasses them as soon as you hit tier 3 or tier 4. I'd skip Nubia unless you're starting here or you just want longbows, which is totally fine. If they didn't exist, I'd put them below Lower Egypt somehow because it just has no redeeming factors. If you prefer a rush, aggressive playstyle, the Highlands and Sinai are amazing, though the Highlands are a little bit annoying to reach unless you're starting in Anatolia. Any of the Anatolian factions are just gonna benefit so much from the Highlands, especially if you get them early. The only reason these two are not a tier higher is just because they really lack a tiny bit of that late game archer firepower and tanky infantry that it kills at the same time. Lowlands and Isua are completely carried by the Axemen, both mid tier and high tier. The AI just has no counterplay against them. They're just so good and so easy to get. It's a joke, honestly. Upper Egypt essentially makes the rest of their area obsolete because they just have such fantastic infantry and chariots as well. Kanan has a great location, versatile units, they're pretty good stat-wise for the most part and they can be easily matched with any roster in the game. Sea people, my beloved. No, seriously, this roster just completely warps the game. Build an early Warrior's Refuge and just wait until you get the units. If RNG is lucky to you and you somehow get a tier 4 unit very early on into the campaign, you might as well just quit it there because you know what, you've already won. If you don't like the RNG, just get the mod that lets you recruit the units anywhere or after fighting the sea people and enjoy. Right, so we're finally at the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. There's gonna be a lot more educational content like this. There's also gonna be more historical informative videos back on track soon. Your continued support is greatly appreciated as always, and you know that's true. Any likes, shares, or subscribing if you're crazy enough is, you know what? Awesome. If you have any specific educational content you wanna see, write it in the comments, and until the next time...